Hey guys, what's going on? How you doing? Welcome to Millionaire Mafia. I really appreciate you guys being here today. Got something pretty special for you. I'm going to go ahead and basically bring you along and let you just watch me do a cold call to a uh, lead that we found for a RV park. It's about 85 spaces out in Kansas. So nothing fancy. We didn't do any creative marketing or anything like this. Just had somebody that pointed it out to us and then we're going to follow up on it. I have not talked to these people at all. I don't know anything about them. I don't know anything about the park other than what they put in the post. And so what I'll do is I'll tell you what I, the information that I know. I'll see if I can get a picture overlaid here uh, for you. But this this is basically the information I have on this on this park. Here's here's the listing: seven hundred ninety thousand dollars with owner financing, assumable loan, discount for a cash buyer. Call for details. We have owned the park for ten years and are ready to retire. 85 double or 55 single sites. All sites are full hookup and pull through. Okay, located right at this location. Uh, it kind of just gives a, a geo reference, but actually I don't really know what that is. It says it's got a house on there. It's got a swimming pool. It also has a restaurant that was recently closed down. I'm assuming if a restaurant at an RV park was shut down, and eh, who knows what the occupancy is it's probably gone down or, or whatever reason right when things start shutting down in an area kind of not a good sign uh and then all equipment inventory is included with the sale and sellers will stay on to help with a smooth tran smooth transition with the buyers okay if you're a cash buyer they brought it up brought it up again cash buyer front side cash buyer at the close we are willing to discount the price okay uh and then it just says you know Retirement is our goal, not money. Best way to get full details is to call and they list the number. So a couple of things that jump right out to me before I even call these people, right? And, and you got to take this with a grain of salt. It could be a complete, you know, BS. Uh, 790000 Well, why does that pop out to me? Well, other than the fact that it's the price. Um, when, I, when I compare that with 85 double or 55... Single sites, really not 100% sure what that means, but let's just, let's go worst case and say it's 55 sites. 55 sites, at least in our market here, assuming that they're pretty well occupied, and it's an RV park, right? So if it's got a relatively decent occupancy level, that's probably about a $2 million property. That The ask, right? It doesn't mean that it's worth, but that's probably gonna be the ask. Two all the way up to $3 million, depending on the location. So when they say 790,000, that's already pretty low. So what are some things that I think of? Is, are the rents really low? Is the occupancy really low? Is it both? Is it in bad shape? Does it need a lot of um, capital expenditures? You know, does it need major infrastructure, issue, you know, repair, septics, water, things like that, or whatever sewer. We, we don't know if it's a city or, or public, or excuse me, private. So we'll, we'll have to see. That's gonna be a question we'll ask. Um, right off the bat, they say discount for a cash buyer. So, so right off the bat, before we even anybody talks to them, they're putting it out there that they're willing to give a discount. So that already shows motivation, at least at face value. Again, it could be a sales technique or tactic. You never know. Um, and then it says, they talk a little bit about them. They, they own the park, right? So they're the owners, at least according to this, they've owned it for 10 years and they're just looking to retire, right? And they talk about that it can be an assumed loan or owner financing. That's pretty good. An assumable loan is pretty awesome because you can basically just roll right in on top of that loan. You still have to qualify with that bank. Uh, I'm not worried about that, but I just have to qualify and I can basically assume that loan. And, and that's pretty awesome. That, that really reduces a lot of the things I have to do and the bank's already familiar with it. And as long as I can bring my experience and you know my, my credibility to the table along with my money, which is at the end of the day all they really care about, then we're fine. Okay, so to talk a little bit about the property itself, I mentioned the, the restaurant closing down, but I mentioned that it has some decent stuff there. Um, so it so sounds decent. It's an RV park with uh, you know a pool and a house on site that could be used for a, a manager. Right, like an on site manager, so you can just let them live for free or significantly discount, and they're right there and they're taken care of, and all that stuff. That's pretty cool. That's probably where they're living right now. I would imagine that that's the owner's occupancy and, uh, or you know, where they live, where they reside, and they probably manage the park and do everything, you know, stuff like that. I, I highly, 
highly doubt it's not them. And then it talks about, um, you know, they'll actually stay on. And that makes me another reason why I think that they live right there. They'll stay on to help with the transition. Uh, and then again, if you're a cash buyer, we're willing to discount the price. Retirement is our goal, not money, right? So all those things kind of point to motivation. There's a lot of different little things. I mean, in, in like a couple paragraphs right here. Well, you're not going to be able to see it. on. Sorry, I showed you. You're not going to be able to see it. Um, but I'll, I'll put that up there later, uh, assuming the call goes. But we're going to try. It might go to voicemail. I don't know. If it goes to voicemail, I'll leave a message. That way you can at least hear what I say when I leave a voicemail with, with a cold call. And then we'll pick this video back up at a later date whenever I'm able to get a hold of them or I can get them on the phone. Cool. All right, here we go. Let's try it. And we, one, you know what? Something I noticed, I type this number in and this number pops up as a Kansas number. And the city is very close to where this property, at least per the ad is. It doesn't say a specific address, but it's in that area, which is good because that means it's not like an out of state, you know, like a like a wholesaler or something like that, that I have, they already have the property under contract and I kind of got to go through them. That's not... Jim DeRoche. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Hi Jim, how you doing? My name is Jake Chambers. I'm actually calling about uh, a posting that you had about your RV park out there in Kansas. Um, I've got several parks throughout the uh, the Midwest and the uh, the Southeast, so uh, you know definitely interested in, in talking to you about it. Um, you know I, I know you're busy, and I got uh, practice tonight with my uh, daughters tonight. So if I don't pick up, uh, please just leave a message. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, but my number, you can reach me directly at 850-797-6137. And once again, my, my name is Jake, and look forward to talking to you. Take care, Jim. Okay, so, you, you know, nothing fancy there. I'm not going to tell them you know, my whole life story. I just kind of mentioned, put a little thing about my daughter about, hey, so when they come call me back and they don't pick up, they're not thinking I'm just you know, ignoring her call or some Joe Schmo. They're like, okay, I know this guy, you know, I don't, I don't care that he knows that I got kids or that I'm, you know, practicing or I want to show that I'm a good person. But I, I kind of explained that I just really briefly know what I'm doing essentially with, hey, I've got several parks in the Southeast and the Midwest and I'm interested in your property. Give me a call back. I may be busy when you call, um, but if, you know, if you do leave a message, I'll call you right back simple all right so anyway we'll we'll see maybe he'll, if he calls and i'm sitting here i got a bunch of work to do today if he calls in the next few minutes or, or so i'll i'll buzz you guys in and we'll see how it goes all right uh until then just uh hang on and we'll see what happens from it this would be a pretty sweet one if it's a good deal all right later well, this is jake speaking hey jake it's jim uh you called about my rv park in kansas i'm sorry i was on the phone when you called no hey it's, I, i'm on the phone like all day sometimes i, I wonder if i need to get it surgically removed sometimes so i get it okay. <laughs> no no worries so uh, how you doing today doing good just good. a little busy but doing good 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 you busy at your uh your park or just busy in general no, at the park. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so I'll be, I'll be hundred percent honest. I got this uh, sent to me as a, as a screenshot from my partner. He was like, Hey man, I'm out of, he's out of town. And he sent it to me, the, the Facebook, I don't know what group it's from or anything. He just sent it. Uh, I'm the, I'm the commercial guy in, in our, our partnership. So I kind of handle this stuff and, and like, I, okay. yeah. So, but anyway, um, to, if you know, I saw the listing, so I got some of the information. I was, I was wondering if you could maybe just kind of tell me your story on the park, and then we can kind of go from there. So, sure, okay. Yeah, we've owned the park for ten years. I'm almost seventy years old. Uh, we need to retire. Uh, the the VA where I get my health care from says I uh, better retire before it kills me because <laughs> some health issues. So, oh, no. Uh, you, you know, finally, and my wife has been after me to always listen to them and. Finally, I'm doing that. Uh, we, uh, we've owned it for 10 years, um, and we've done massive uh, upgrades and 
additions and whatnot since we've owned it. Um, we have 55 single sites or 85 doubles. Out of the 55, we can we can. Are you familiar with single and double sites? Um, well, I um we have. Well, why don't you explain it to me? Because I just want to make sure I understand. Because I saw that and I was like, "What do you, What do you mean by that?" So, um, cause, yeah, because because like you know the single, I'm thinking like a single wide versus a double wide, but obviously that doesn't make any sense. So, what, what that means? You is, mean like pull through? Do you have an RV? Yeah, uh, we my my parents do, and we we have RV with them. Like, do you mean like a pull through set, spot, site? Yes, everything oh. we have is a pull through. Every single side is a pull through. Okay. okay. But uh, imagine the electric pedestal in your utilities uh, when you pull into the site and they're on your driver's side. Oh, uh, okay. So, so if the site, let's see, the, you pull into the site and the site runs north and south, okay? Mm hmm. And you're going to pull in, uh, you know, one way, you're going to either pull in north or south on one side of that pedestal. Well, a double site means that another RV can pull in on the other side of the pedestal facing the opposite direction from you. Oh, I see what, yeah, okay. So, so, so a bar, and sometimes they call them buddy sites. Mm -hmm. of, uh, of our, our 55 sites, 85 of them could be buddy sites. And sometimes we use them for buddy sites. <laughs> Generally not for like vacation type campers or something. Yeah, they want a little more space. You can't go to that one. Uh, anyway, anyway, the um, so you know, but what we do in the winter time when we go out to park, we the winter was dead, so we prospected for monthlies in the winter, and we in the winter time we try to get more monthlies because there's not that many dailies that come through in the winter time. Yeah. And and so the monthlies don't mind, you know, the the monthlies are are usually. Uh, for instance, there's an ethanol plant 15 miles away, uh, and they were building then. Uh, we have a lot of oil pipeliners through here on a regular basis. We have um, we have uh, uh, the, the uh, wind farm people here. Oh, okay. uh, we've got uh, the Highline people. I mean, it, it goes on and on. And oil on. pipeline. And we prospected amongst them, and they know us now as a place where they can bring people in and, and their RVs that are going to work there temporarily and there there are monthlies and they pay monthly which is 550 a month but they also pay their electric we put electric meters on everything okay you know? but uh, they don't mind being a and b or buddy sites you know usually campers don't want to be that close to each other you know when they're like vacationing right but that's where we use that but with 55 sites we rarely have to turn people away occasionally if they're big rigs and we're filling up with big rigs it's a whole lot harder to find a spot for a 45 foot motorhome with a tow than it is for somebody that has a little 20 foot travel trip you know right yep 100 percent. so, so but, but generally i mean we stay i mean the bottom line is is we stay as busy as we want you know okay um and and we're on 15 acres and there is room for expansion on up there if you wanted to. We added three years ago, which, uh, you know, because of COVID, we thought last year we were going to just really go big with this. But COVID, everything was shut down, including most of us. Yeah. But uh, anyway, we, we did. Um, last year, we added a, a big amphitheater, outdoor amphitheater for entertainment. Now, last year, three years ago, we started the construction. Oh, cool. um, and um you know it's all got all power and everything else and uh so we added that and that's 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 in an area where there's lots of space uh in 2015-16 because we had those monthlies i was telling you about that came from mpg pipeline in texas um we had 60 rigs in for that winter which pretty much eliminated our ability to put um you know the overnighters in, and we have a, you know, we're, we're the only RV park that's open around here in the winter time, and uh, you know, so we kind of shut ourselves in the foot. So we added 16 additional big rig pull through sites in 2015-16. Okay. And 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 we we you know we fill that up pretty pretty you know, often you know, but 
so that's you know that's it and uh, you, you know i'm going to be real honest with you you know the having we've owned the marinas before oh and nice marinas are a lot of work actually they're more work than an rv park but we sold all of our stuff in, in virginia with the idea that you know we were going to step down and retire a little bit if i had thought this out more when i did this i would have bought a seasonal park and not one that was open all year right because uh, i mean you know there's i mean our, our little vacations and escapes are very short you know right um you know but but if you own a seasonal park you're going for months at a time you know Mm-hmm. yeah absolutely um okay well, cool. Uh, so the, the amphitheater is kind of a neat thing. It's it's funny because when I was a kid, I'm not I'm not you know that old. I'm only you know 37. But when I was a kid, we used to do a lot of camping. Uh, and I remember one of the the parks or the the campground we stayed at had an amphitheater type thing. I thought that was because they used to do like kids events and stuff there. They had like actors sure. and. Now, 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 the other thing too, uh, there was a barn on the property. Barn was built in about uh, 1900, and it was just an empty barn with a concrete floor. And my wife, my son, and I converted it and built it out, and it became Captain Jack's Pub. Now we cl- we we closed Captain Jack's Pub uh, in July. This you know just just you know two months ago. Oh. And the reason that we closed it is because, like everybody else, you know, we're having a hard time finding help. But we were open eight years. And we became the number one rated restaurant in Northwest Kansas. Um, you, you know, if you go online to like Facebook, uh-huh. and you go and you go facebook.com slash Captain Jack's Pub, C A P N Jack's Pub, okay. you'll find this, and there's tons of pictures. And we were, I mean, we, we were not, we were a five star restaurant. We served things like uh, rack of lamb, escargot, I mean, you know, stuff like that. Oh, wow. We were not a a fly by night, you know, but still couldn't get, couldn't get help. And in addition to that, we wanted to, I, I wanted to start preparing for the sale of the park and for retirement. And most of the people who were talking to me about the park did not want a restaurant, but it's, everything stays, all the equipment that's in there, it's fully operational. Uh, and it makes a very deluxe clubhouse for the park. That's for sure. Yeah. Oh, you you get- know, and if you wanted, if somebody wanted to lease it out as a restaurant, I mean, it's, like I say, fully equipped, ready to go, you know? Uh-huh. It's just that at, at my age, this was the next plan on the agenda, you know? Okay. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So, again, just bear bear with me because I'm not super familiar with Kansas. I've driven through it a few times in route to – I'm from Illinois. I'm, I'm actually from north of Chicago, so I'm familiar with the, the cold winters and all that kind of stuff. And I used to be – I mean, are, we don't have winters like Chicago. Yeah, I, know, I, used I don't. To spend time in Chicago when I was a kid because that's where my grandparents lived. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't think anybody has winters like Chicago, man. That oh, place. It's wicked there. Oh, yeah. brutal. And, and by the way, let me tell you about that. Let me touch on that for a minute. Um, we came from Norfolk, Virginia, and oh. we were prepared for the worst because we thought, oh yeah, you know, Kansas. Well. The weather here is better than it was in Norfolk, Virginia. Not only did we get hurricanes in Norfolk, Virginia, but we also got tornadoes because the spinoff from the hurricanes we, and nor'easters. And we have 300 days of sunshine out here. And by the way, we are not in Hurricane Alley or in, I'm sorry, Tornado Alley out here. Yeah. Uh, that's the eastern half of the state. Okay. We're, we're almost to the Colorado border, you know? Yeah. Okay, so our... So is this is this part is this Garden City is that because again I'm not that's why I was going to ask is that is that where you're at I'm trying to trying to I don't see like an actual address on the thing and and I, I know you said you're at Exit 70 I'm trying to find Exit 70 on here um, I see 83 North South correct okay. yeah Exit 70 and I 70 yeah if you find um, Colby Kansas and Oakley Kansas okay we're between there. You know, we're between Oakley and Colby. We're 16 miles from Colby, which is in the same county we're in, Thomas okay. County. We're four miles from Oakley, uh, which is actually in Logan County. So Thomas County, by the way, we that was a, a stroke of luck. We didn't know, but they're much more progressive county, you know, more pro-growth and everything than Oakley is. Okay. So, yeah. Gotcha. And by the way, another reason that I bought this, two reasons you should know, okay? is um, that, number one, there's no restrictions. 
I mean, I've built, uh, you know, as a real estate developer, I've built um, lots of things in the Chesapeake Bay region in Norfolk, Virginia. And I used to always resent having inspectors breathe down my neck that have never held a contractor's license, but they were going to tell me how to do it, you know? Right. Here, we don't have that. We're unrestricted. There's no zoning. You can build anything you want. You don't have to have permits or anything, you know, and, and that's, you know, we're in the county. That's the way that that works. And then the other reason I bought it is we own the water rights and we own 25 acre feet of water rights. What that means is that we own the water rights for the entire corner here at I-70. And if somebody decided they wanted to come along and they wanted to build an RV park across the street or next year or whatever, they couldn't do it because they don't have water to do it. We own the water. We are a licensed state commercial water system. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Yeah, I see. I see it now. So it looks like you're on the west side there. That would be correct. Yeah, okay. yeah I see it now. It looks like there's like a little mini golf course right there too. Yes. And, and there's a. Well, actually, we took that out. But, okay. Um, there's a, a, a truck stop called J and J across the street from us. Yeah. And these guys are great. They're good neighbors, um, and uh, they get a lot of business from us, and we get a lot of business from them. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, you guys have a um, a uh, lagoon system there. Is that what that is? We we do. Okay. Uh, there are four lagoons. We only use one. We only use the big one. Uh, once upon a time, we have pictures of it. There were there was an Olympic sized swimming pool here. It was built in the '60s. It leaked so bad that they pump, constantly pumped water in to keep it full. All that water went down to the lagoons, and all four lagoons were full. Well, the previous owner to us, it's probably back 15, 16 years ago, uh, took the pool out because of that, covered it over. We've since put in another pool, but our pool's a lot different and a lot small. And uh, we have, um, you know, when we did that, um, when she did that, when she filled in the old pool, three of the four lagoons just completely dried up so we only have to use the big lagoon and that's for our sewage and uh, by the way there are no sewage uh, there's no lift stations or anything like that the the sewage lagoon which is on the um on the southeast corner of the property is the lowest portion of the property and everything naturally flows that way when we added the 16 additional sites it was easy peasy because we plumbed right to it, you know? Yeah, just a gravity system there. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah, cool. Sure. We've never had. And, 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 you know, this is the first lagoon system I've ever had in any of my properties. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what I'd been missing because it is the most perfect perpetual motion machine I've ever seen, you know? Yeah. Yeah, we haven't. We've We've been under contract on a few over the over the years and we just never it didn't work out it wasn't due to yeah. the the system itself just the yeah. the deal didn't work but yeah okay and we also have two commercial deep wells uh in january of 2020 we replaced uh one of the pumps and uh one of our commercial wells and we had the the uh the well guy uh run a check on the other pump to make sure it was okay and it was um, but it was interesting when he pulled the pump out and replaced it. He said, asked if I knew how old the pump was. And I said, no, I don't have a clue. He says 24 years old. So it lasted for 24 years. You know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They, they can typically last a little while if they're, you know, yeah. not abused or anything. Okay. Gotcha. Um, yeah, that place is, uh, so Oakley, yeah, I see it there. Yeah. About a little closer to Oakley, I guess. Um, so you said it's four miles from Oakley, 16 from Colby. In fact, as we speak, I'm riding in the car with my wife going to pick up those hydrants that, uh, the plumbing place has, <laughs> which is in Colby. Gotcha. Well, so what are you using the, the hydrants for, for the park or for something from oh, other yeah. parts? Oh, oh yeah. When we, when we bought this park, uh, this is one of the other upgrades we did. There was nothing in the park except for the galvanized faucets. I mean, the kind of like you might have a home or something like that, mm -hmm. coming right up out of the ground. And every winter, you know, by, by the time it got to be the end of October, they needed to be winterized and they had no water in the park. And so, so you know, that means that they, they, you shut off the valves, you know, call your, call your lines. And you had to blow everything out. You take like a, a shop vac and blow all the water out. Right. We cut all those out, and uh, we replaced them all with uh, with uh, frost-free hydrants. 
So, okay. you know, and that was a good move. And by the way, my son stays with the, the, the property. He, he doesn't really stay with it. He lives in town, but he's got a fiance here. And uh, he, my son is a master plumber, uh, gas and, and, uh, and water. And he also, uh, you know, a lot of plumbers are uh, like electricians as well. He's not a licensed electrician, but he certainly knows everything about it. He knows every system in this park, but he's staying. And we'll stay too, by the way. It's, it's, we, we don't have any place to go. We're just going to retire. So, you know, okay. we don't, we don't really have any place to go yet. So probably going to buy a motor home again, you know, and do that sort of thing. But, um, we're not, so whoever buys this, we're here to help with the transition as long as they want us to, you know? Okay. So after all those all those years operating RV park, you're going to go buy an RV and go RVing, huh? <laughs> well, we, we owned, we've owned motorhomes before, and we liked it. And, you know, for the 10 years we've been here, we haven't really taken any serious vacations or traveled, and we sort of missed that. I mean, yeah. it's, uh, you know, in fact, i got to tell you, this December... Uh, a couple months ago, we looked at what our reservations into December, and so far, like I said, a couple months ago, we only had one for December 9th because it was so far out, you know? Yeah. So we, we have actually uh, closed off the month of December, and we're actually taking off the month and taking a real vacation for a month. And uh, well, I've got a house sitter coming in that knows about how to run the park and stuff like that. So, you know, we're gonna we're gonna actually take a real vacation. It'll be the first one in ten years. Wow. Yeah, that's that's a long time. We uh we we did the same thing. My wife and I we just celebrated our 15 year anniversary. We went to Crystal River and we we got four kids and. I we, I've been in the I just got out of the Marine Corps after about 15 years too so I we yeah. we haven't really had a vacation you know we've done stuff but it was always as a family so we me and me and her sure. haven't done well, anything. When you have kids you gotta take them on vacation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're all, they all play sports and all that stuff too. So, so you did 15 years in the Marines, huh? I did. I was actually a, a Cobra attack pilot for about uh, seven years and then I I was a, a helicopter instructor here in Pensacola. I'm I'm out of Pensacola, Florida area so. I, uh, I did four years in the Navy, went in when I was 17, um, and I was Navy SEAL. I was actually UDT side of the SEAL team. And I went to Vietnam when I was 18. So. <laughs> wow, that's that's impressive. My uh, my neighbor across the street's a retired uh, uh, UDT guy. He was then he retired from the police department. So I, I uh, he's pretty cool. cool he's got yeah. a lot of cool stories yeah. and stuff. Yeah, this wasn't something I wanted to do, but I had civilian diving experience. And Vietnam was hot and heavy in 1972. Yeah. And uh, you know they they decided that's what I was going to do because of my experience. If if I didn't have to keep doing it, I might have stayed in the Navy. You know, yeah. but they put me at risk so many times. I mean, it was just unbelievable. Yep. Yeah. You guys, a whole different, uh, whole different era there, man. I mean, you know. Yeah, I work by the way mostly with Marines. Yeah, you know? I bet. So, so, I mean, many times I thought, man, I should have joined the Marines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we worked with the SEALs a lot when I was deployed to Afghanistan. The couple of times I was there, the SEALs and the yeah. Delta guys and and all those all those guys. Those those are the most fun guys to work with for sure. You know, I got to tell you, um, being you know being an Afghanistan guy, you know, I'm glad you're here. You know. Yeah. I mean, I'm I, I'm glad you made it. Well, if you ever seen the movie The Deer Hunter, uh, maybe not. It's an old movie. I've I've seen uh, part of it. Yeah, I haven't seen the whole thing. I know what you're talking about. Well, that's exactly what I did in Vietnam. So, mm. you know, it's, uh, and, and that's what I'm saying. I mean, it's, I, I'm glad I was so young when I was there because I don't think I was as scarred as some of the other guys were, you know? Yeah, no, for sure. That, that's, that's some pretty, pretty tough stuff you guys had to do. So, yeah. but, you know, we, we definitely appreciate it. And I, I have a lot of respect yeah. for, for you guys and, and everything. And, so. and, 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 and you guys too, you know, it's, yeah. It's like I said, I work with Marines, and they had a tougher job than I did. Yeah, know? yeah. But, but anyway, where were we? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. Get, get, it's easy to get off topic once you get into those sea stories. But uh, 
so yeah, um, I, I think I got a pretty good idea um, what would help. And, and again, I, you, you guys sound like you're super organized. You take really good care of everything. So I, I'm not too terribly worried about that, at least now. But what would really help me is to, because I know, you know, when, when you're talking about a lot of seasonal stuff, which you guys have a decent amount of, and you guys obviously have then the monthly, I'm, most of my stuff is, is monthly, even the RV parks we have, they're, they're longer oh, term. Too, yeah. Okay. Oh, yours is monthly, you're saying? Typically, yes, because we oh, can't... Yeah, no, ours is daily because... At forty dollars a night, it's a lot more profitable than five hundred fifty dollars a month. Right. No. Hundred. And I, I completely agree with you. And we, we leave, yeah. we leave some open. We're transitioning, but we, yeah. in our, just in our area, we can get uh, a pre, We, you know, we're in Florida, so we get a lot of snowbirds and things sure, like that. Sure. So they'll, their monthly yeah, rates are pretty high. Up there if we hadn't found the park we wanted to buy. Well. Yeah, I mean, to maybe maybe drop by if you're ever in the area. Let me know, and uh, I got uh, you know a couple people that I would you know recommend. We we have some more, and, and the other thing too is a couple of the parks we have here in in Florida are you know like like C class. They're not they're not like vacation type ones. They're more yeah, designed we, for we long term. Several while we were looking, mm -hmm. but we still hadn't found the park we wanted, and so we said, well, if we don't find the park by winter time, then we're just going to take our motor home in winter in Florida. You know. Nice. But, uh, and that was in 2011, but we did find this. And this one checked more of our boxes than any of them that we looked at. Okay. Well, if if possible, what would really help me out is if I could. I don't know if you guys have like a ready available like like P and L or T twelve and or T twelve that I can, you know, get. I mean, you know, if I need to do a um, you know NDA or something like that, that's fine. That'll just help me get an idea. And do, do me a favor. Okay? Yeah. Send me an email. Uh, so I have your email address. Okay. And and uh, you know, uh, tell me what you want, and I'll, I'll send you what you need. Okay. Cool. And well, just reference our conversation, and I'll send you whatever you need. Okay. I will, Jim. Well, hey, it was it was really great talking to you. Um, good luck with those fire hydrants. Um, <laughs> and uh, thank you. And I'll see you to that email. It's not going to be much, to, at least that you know initially, just a few things, just so I can get an idea of the kind of the financials and the and everything like that okay. will help me. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and, and just actually one more thing, if you don't mind, since I got you on the hook, um, you, you mentioned in the, the, the ad that you put up that it, you had, a, a, an assumable owner financing thing. You kind of use the two yeah. terms together. Yeah. What would you mean what by that? What I did is, um, and this would be mostly for like people that were maybe first time buyers possibly okay. because they have a hard time. Uh, we owe about 260 on the first, which we just we didn't really get a new loan when we came in we basically just assumed what was there you know um okay but we owe about 260 on the first so a little local um, farm bank here okay and technically it's not assumable but if i took somebody in that had you know good credit and a good business history they'd like stand up and shake your hand and say welcome you know <laughs> okay um but um with about 25 percent down um, you know, I'll carry the balance on, on uh, you know, negotiable terms. I mean, we're not unreasonable. You know, I don't get into a pissed match about interest rates or anything because it's insignificant, you know? Right. It just matters how much is coming so, in. <laughs> so, you know, but there again, also, because we've got people, I just had one guy that messaged me about being, you know, a cash buyer. And uh, so, you, you know, we'll, we'll make, you know, good discounts for cash. You know? Okay. Yeah, no, fair enough. Um, and, and you know that I I do a lot of cash buy, buys as well. Um, okay. You know, so we we can do that. Um, you know, I, I'm not. And by the way, money is not my motivation. Yeah. My motivation is ultimately to retire. You know, to to prepare for you know my next step in life. You know. Right, and and I and I appreciate that, and that's at the end of the day, that's why it does, it would potentially make sense to do, you know, kind of a an owner finance for you, and that that you know get get a decent chunk, and make sure you got some skin in the game, and then get that monthly cash flow without having all the work and the headache and, of running and, the park. And, and and again, you know, that's what I say. I mean, it's not we're pretty comfortable, you know. Um, yeah. You know, uh, I got out of the Navy when I was 21. I've been in business for myself ever since. So, nice. you know, um, and that's why I say money is not necessarily my motivator, you know? 
Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, and you know, I definitely appreciate that. And it's, you know, it, that it's nice to know, not not that it necessarily is the, the end all be all, but when you're dealing with somebody, you know, a former service member and obviously a SEAL, it's like, it's a whole different level of kind of, uh, you know, credibility right there. So I appreciate that. Sure. And, um, but I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you get going. I don't want to take up your whole day. I'll, I'll get you that email sent out here in a little bit. Okay. And, uh, good. it was re really good talking to you, Jim. You too. Thank you. All right. Take care. Okay, bye. Bye. Okay. So pretty cool, right? Um, a lot of information there. He kind of started out with his age again and that he wants to retire. Okay, so we really know he wants to retire. We really know, and then he kind of ended the conversation with he's not in it for the money and all this kind of stuff. I mean, that, you know, that's that's kind of possibly true, but there has to be some money, right? Otherwise, there's no point in doing it. But he's, he's trying to get his property. I don't know if you noticed the, the tone, and he kind of kept coming back to, we, we just want to we want to get out so we can go travel. They haven't traveled in 10 years, taken a vacation. They've completely closed the park down in December uh, so they can take a vacation. Now, some of it was due to low booking and stuff like that. It is a little bit early, but uh, for here in Florida, there isn't any openings in December uh, for a park like, like theirs, and this, it's September, beginning of September now. There's no opening, so it... it that should be super booked. Now again, Kansas in the middle of winter versus Florida in the middle of winter, a eh, little bit different, right? Different story. So that's going to be a big concern. Um, I know you can't see it, but I'm looking when I'm talking to somebody on the phone. The whole time I'm looking at the map. I'm looking at uh, you know where they're at, so I can keep kind of see what the area is like. I'm looking at a couple um, like crime, and I'm looking at I use I use uh, bestplaces.net. And what I do is I go in there and I can get a lot of the metrics. I can get a lot of the uh, the population, the growth potential, uh, you know, the the jobs, the major uh, manufacturers and stuff in the area to draw or at least maintain uh, employment, right? And, and so I'm looking at all those things. I'm looking at you know weather. I'm looking at you know comps if there's any other parks and things like that in the area and see kind of what things are renting for to help me kind of figure out what I can get. Whether and when I hear, you know, he, he mentioned really the only number he kind of really mentioned that had to do with the park was the $550 a month plus electric for the month to month guys. Well, so I'm looking at this area, and I mean, we're, we're in Kansas, so if, you, if you're not familiar with Kansas, pretty damn desolate in certain places. It's kind of just small pockets of tightly dense, you know, of dense, densely populated areas, and then pff, nothing for. Miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. I mean, when when you drive through it, it's kind of like if you've ever driven through Texas or Nebraska or things like that. It's just open. Uh, and and this this particular area, I mean, it, it is like a blip on the radar. It's an exit, and 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 there it is, right there. There's that park, and there's a there's a truck stop, and that's about it, right? There's a little little breakfast inn, like literally the only place to eat. Is, is right across the street. There's no, there's no town. There's no uh, bed and there, there's no like convenience store. I mean, you got the gas station across the street, and he mentioned in there they have or had a restaurant they just shut down. Um, it's obvious why employment would be hard to maintain even in our current economic uh, situation. Now they are only about four miles away from a from a small town called Oakley. Nothing major there. They. They don't have a Walmart or anything like that. And they're about 15 miles uh, southeast of a place called Colby, okay? And Colby looks a little bit more densely populated. Uh, again, not a whole lot going on there. I don't see any major manufacturers there. Um, a lot of uh, urban uh, or a lot of really densely populated area, probably a couple square miles and then just farmland. So... This would be what we be we call like a destination location, um, but not even so much a destination. It'd be more like a like a fly by night, where somebody is is coming, and I don't mean that in, the, in a derogatory way, but like where somebody's driving and they see a sign on the highway, and they're getting near the end of their day, and they see the sign and it says, you know, RV can't park up ahead, stop here. Well, they they get off the ramp and they they stop and they stay for the night that's that's pretty much it and then they can you know it's got truck stops so they can get gas and and things like that across the street they can stay there but they're really only going to be there for the night so i would imagine i mean this is highway 70 highway 70 is a major road like 
like major road. I mean, you know, millions and millions and millions of cars travel this road every year. So super, super high traffic count, right? Um, but how many people are staying? And that's going to be kind of the, the key. And he, like you said, he said it was about $40 a night, which is pretty good. That's not bad. I mean, it's pretty low for out here in Florida, but for somewhere out there. So if their traffic count that stops is high enough, I mean, th then you're, you're good. You're going to have a lot of turnover. And like I said, they're probably going to be there for a day or maybe two. A lot of times here in Florida, they have like a three day minimum that you have to stay because they don't want these in and out, in and out. It reduces it because they have a lot of, uh, a lot more uh, demand so they can, they can do that. Um, so it's going to be very, very management intensive, hands down, without a doubt, no question about it. I mean, very management intensive. Um, there's some things that we can do to automate things a little better, make our life easier, but it's still going to be a, a, a case. And then some of the other, I don't know if you noticed on, on the call, I was basically, I was kind of just letting him talk. I, I a couple times, and I, I've said this a few times in some of our, our videos and stuff like that, but the, the key is to let the seller talk because most of the time they're going to give you all the information you need. And then when they stop giving you information you need, either getting off topic or just running out of things that you know, they think they can say, that's when you will ask a question or you know mention something or try and keep the conversation going, right? Um, and then you get into, you heard when I mentioned the, the military thing, because uh, I heard him to say something about the VA. I don't know if you heard that, you probably didn't catch that, but he mentioned the VA and how he had, you know, was, they were going to kill him or whatever if they killed him first. Or you know, he was kind of making a joke about it when he, after he'd said how old he was. So I, boom, that was like, bing, like radar going off in the head because instantly I know I can, I can make a connection with my military background. And you got to use that. If, if you hear, if you're really into baseball or you're really into swimming or fishing or something and you hear somebody kind of obviously like you, you hear that um, or they get excited about something that you're also into, it doesn't have to be your favorite thing in the world, but something you're into and you're knowledgeable about, use that to your advantage in that situation, in that call. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, I mentioned the email. He, he gave me his email. I'm going to go ahead and send that. Uh, email to him and thank him for the conversation I say hey Jim it was great talking to you today I really appreciate your time you know I'm going to kind of draw back to that fire hydrant thing hey I hope you got a really good raid and all those uh, you know fire hydrants um, and then I'm going to say hey okay so here's the information that I need and just kind of and, and let him know so the things that I want to hear on this one you kind of got to look at a, a nightly RV place which is which is predominantly this they have some and it sounds like very few monthly uh, or, or what we call long-term leases, they, they're they mostly living off of the nightly. So you, you kind of got to think of this as like a hotel or a motel on wheels, so to speak, right? Um, with mobile home parks or our long-term RV parks where we have people staying for months or years at a time, we call that like a, an apartment on wheels, right? And then, you know, these are, these are hotels or motels. So you're not going to have a consistent, probably not going to have a very consistent rate so you got to kind of you're going to see ebbs and flows you're going to see in the summertime things are probably going to drive up as the summer wanes and we get closer to school it's going to come down during holidays especially depending on location it's going to probably tick back up and then certain holidays or certain times of the month in this case in uh you know kansas kansas right you know so kansas gets if you don't know it gets freaking cold uh, it doesn't get as cold as like illinois that like we were talking about or, or further north states but it gets cold and it's very flat and open and gets windy it, it's not it's not very cool or fun to stay at, right? You're not gonna go out in your in your bathing suit. So people leave there and go somewhere else in the winter. So a lot of times we are probably gonna see Thanksgiving time, Christmas time, January and February into those months, probably pretty dead. Um, it's gonna be those, those occasional drive by night or fly by night people that are coming in and just run out of gas, not literally or maybe literally or figuratively, and they need to stop for the night. And those are the people who are gonna stop at R or this RV park, right? So we need to see the, the P&L, the profit and loss statement. So how much income did he take in throughout the year? And then what expenses did he have? Not only a total amount, so we can kind of get what our NOI is, but also where are those expenses going? Were those expenses mostly on operating cost or day-to-day -day routine or uh, expenses, or were they, um, were they big ticket items? 
for example, like the Lagoon system, uh, he talked about the fire hydrants, how they've updated things, they've updated the, the pipes and some of that kind of stuff. So if we see a lot of those things, these big ticket items, that means those were improvements to the park, probably, which is good. Um, if we see a lot of repairs for the same thing over and over, then we could probably tell that it, it could have some you know, recurring maintenance that we might want to take a look at. And then the other thing, at least to get started, there's some other, a lot more documents we're going to need and stuff like that. But we're also looking for the T12. And that, to me, is in, in this instance, is going to be really important. It's important in all properties. But a T12 helps you see trends in each of those line items because it's going to break it out by month. So a P&L is like throughout, throughout the whole year or a set amount of time, but it doesn't like break it out by month. So, for example, you might have a $10,000 expense for maintenance, let's say. But you see maintenance in January is like a hundred, a couple hundred dollars, and then February is a few hundred dollars. Then March is like, you know, two thousand dollars, and then the next month is three thousand, and then it goes back down. Well, what happened? Well, for example, that's something we saw in our park up in Gary, Indiana. It was is January and February. We kept seeing these massive repair bills, and we we're like, what is going on? There's no corresponding ticket or or receipt, and we come to find out that it had some major water main breaks well it's winter up in gary indiana which is right next door to chicago very cold older pipes that makes sense so it, we were able to kind of piece it together that's the kind of things that we're looking for and then you can see other trends um you but in this case i'm more concerned not so much on the expense i'm very concerned about expenses but i'm more concerned about the income side so in most of our properties when we buy and we know that it's let's say 75 percent occupied those don't typically shift like this throughout the year. They're, they're pretty consistent. You might see a little dip and then it goes back up and it kind of rides along and it might dip and it might go up even more, right? And then go, but it doesn't it doesn't go like a like a freaking roller coaster. I guarantee you when I see this, it's gonna look like a little bit of a roller coaster. And because it's seasonal, it's very much based off of eyeballs on this thing, right? And it's not a vacation area. So it's gonna really be about who's paying attention and who's kind of hitting that point at this particular stop in this particular area of a massive highway that's in the middle of nowhere, seeing this, stopping by and saying, here's where we're gonna stay for the night. So that's what you gotta take into consideration. And that's, I'll show you guys kind of what, what I see. I'll, I'll put that on the screen and I'll, I'll do a kind of an overlay here in a little bit. Uh, but anyway, so kind of a longer video today. I wanted you to hear that whole call. Um, some of this, just so you know, might have been edited out just to eliminate some kind of us or thinking so we don't have to have a whole lot of time. But for the most part, what you saw is the, is the whole conversation. I didn't cut out any proprietary and inform information. This is just how I talk to a seller. And this is how you should too. You kind of build, talk, build a rapport, let them talk. You hear, heard me say, hey, I want, just tell me about the park. What's your story? He told the park, he told me everything about it, and then I just asked a couple questions. And he told me stuff I didn't even, some, some of the things I didn't even think about asking. And that's good, and you want him to say that. So that means he was comfortable, you know. I know his wife was right there because he was sitting there talking while he, they were driving, right? So there's just a lot of information um, that I can gather with that conversation from this particular seller. So anyway, hope you liked it. Um, I'll basically make the, the next part, the underwriting part, uh, regardless of whether I end up going under contract or buying this in any way, shape or form, I, I'm going to, I'm going to do an underwriting. So this is going to be a part one. And then part two is going to be me doing the underwriting. And then hopefully if we go further, this thing would be a part three and then subsequent, subsequent parts, uh, after that. So, uh, we'll see. It's pretty, it's pretty desolate. Um, I'm not going to lie. We, you know, I'll talk in that video about the, the second video about why, uh, it being desolate can be bad for more than just the obvious reasons uh, and some things we need to consider, okay? Uh, well, until next time, until I get that information, uh, keep checking out those other videos. Go ahead and subscribe so you can get all the videos that I push out uh, and learn this type of information. I'm just trying to give you guys all the information that I didn't have readily available to me when I first got started. So hope you got something out of this and look forward to seeing you on the next one. Go out and make some money and until next time, Here's to your wealth, guys.